Tang Zong, and what is it? Well, the Tang Zong technique is a Japanese technique, though it sounds like it's Chinese, and it's a way to preserve the longevity of your bread and keep up its fluffiness. There's a lot of websites out there that go through really complicated math formulas to figure it out, and I've kind of figured out a simple version of this. So essentially, you want to measure out your flour um, and your yeast and everything, but you're going to steal from your flour. So you get the amount that you need. And then for about every loaf, okay, that's going to be about, um, I don't know, like an 800 gram loaf, um, you're going to be stealing two tablespoons of flour. And then whatever liquid you're using, I'm using milk because I'm doing a white bread, you're going to essentially steal about a quarter of a cup of the milk or water, whatever it is that you're mixing in. So I'm doing a three loaf recipe so I don't have to bake every day. I freeze my bread so it lasts really well and I just cook it less often. So because I have three, uh, a three loaf recipe, I'm going to go ahead and use a tablespoon and steal six tablespoons. So I got my six tablespoons and three quarters of a cup of milk. And then I need to grab myself a whisk. And I'm going to go ahead and whisk this together. So I'm using my regular recipe, but I've essentially stolen some of my recipe to do this on the side. All right. So now I got to go over to my microwave. And you want to have something that you can rest your tools on because you know, the milk and flour is going to make a little bit of a mess. And I'm going to microwave it at small increments. So make sure it's all mixed in there really good. And I'm going to start by microwaving at 30 second increments. And the goal is that we need to get the temperature to 140 to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's also going to be important that you have a thermometer that you can use. An instant read is going to be better um, than something that's going to take a while to register a temperature. So if you go over the 150, you've essentially burned the flour. And if you go under 140, then you haven't cooked it enough. Before I take the temperature, I'm going to whisk that up because we know microwaves do not heat evenly. And I'll take a temperature. Now, I started out with this milk at refrigerator cold, so it's going to take a little longer. I'm at about 83 degrees. Giving that a mix, and I'll put it back in for another 30 seconds. As you start getting closer, to the 140 degrees, you want to lower your increments of using the microwave. So as I start getting closer, I'm going to go to 20 seconds, maybe 15 seconds, because I really don't want to burn, um, burn my flour. And you'll start to notice that it'll thicken up a bit. You might even get kind of like a ball of dough kind of in the middle because of the way the microwave heats. Let's test this again. Okay, we're at 115 degrees. So we're getting closer. I'm going to do another 30 seconds. Now, I'll be sharing my uh, white bread recipe um, in the description below, so you're welcome to take a look at that. And um, one of the nice things I like to do with my white bread is I'm, I'm making three loaves because I'm going to do two loaves of white and then one loaf of a flavored bread. So one of the things I'm working on now is I boiled a can of condensed milk for 90 minutes, so it turns it into caramel. And then I'm going to be using some candied pecans as well to layer into one of those loaves. You can definitely see this is thickening up a bit.
we're at exactly 140.4 degrees. So I have reached my 140, which is important. Now, you can't just add this right in. It has to either cool down by itself, or if you have eggs in your recipe, you can add cold eggs to it. So I happen to have some cold eggs handy. And my recipe for three loaves calls for three eggs. So I'm going to go ahead and pop those in, if I can get them out of the container. And then all I have to do now is just add this into my recipe, kind of essentially pretending I never did it in the first place. But now I know my eggs and my milk are all set. So I go ahead and mix this in and this will cool down my pre-cooked batter um, to more like room temperature or a little warm's okay, but you don't want to be so hot that you kill your yeast. And you can see my yeast is going crazy here as it's waiting for me to get ready. So that's how um, you could do a tanzong, and that will make your bread fresh for more. Most likely, when you put out bread, it's it's like good for four days, and then it starts getting funky. This will make it last like a week or more. So it's a great technique, and again, freeze some of that extra bread. And it works really great. You can just defrost it and just tastes like fresh. So tanzong is not something really crazy or hard to do, but it does lengthen the freshness and taste of your bread. Um, there'll be more in the description, and I'll tell you a little. Maybe I'll do another video about the um, uh, the pecan bread that I'm.